the last time I spoke to you, things were looking positive. Now you've got this additional funding, $600 billion in a B-series B funding. How are you prioritising where you put that money to use? What are your, uh, what, what's in focus and how are you going to spend this additional cash? I think we are a technology savvy company, so uh, of course we will invest more money on talents, on uh, the technology development, and uh, also expanding our uh, sales and marketing team. Mm. Autonomous driving, that's the key focus for you, isn't it? Is that where you see the greatest revenues longer term? Well, um, um, I think autonomous driving um, is uh, a long journey to go, mm. um, uh, in particular in China, given the very complex uh, you know, traffic situation. We don't think uh, you know, uh, fully autonomous dri driving will be ready uh, in the next, uh, you know, say, five years. So I think uh, currently the main focus is for the driving assistance, mm. uh, which is what we, we call uh, ADAS. So, um, but given 30 million uh, new cars, you know, every year uh, in China, I think this is already a huge market uh, for the ADAS, the driving assistance mm. business. Now, when I spoke to you about a year ago, you said your ambitions would be to be the number one player in, in autonomous cars with 30 million cars using your chips by 2025. Are you on right. track for that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, actually, this year, we are launching our first uh, automotive grade uh, AI processor. I think, uh, if I'm correct, uh, this is the ever first one in China. Uh, Yukai, great to have you here. It's, it's Yvonne in Hong Kong. I'm just wondering, the autonomous driving space is a very crowded market here at the moment, and I guess access to top talent is certainly a key differentiator here. I, it's interesting to note that most of your R&D is based domestically in China, which is a very different strategy from the likes of Alibaba, Baidu, and the like. Why do you think you go with this kind of direction here, and does that put you at a disadvantage in some way? Um, I think we are uh, definitely expanding our R&D uh, to global. Um, we are. Uh, currently, we have an R&D um, uh, office in uh, Silicon Valley, and uh, we are thinking to open up uh, R&D uh, in Europe. So, and uh, actually, even uh, sitting in China, in Beijing, uh, the, our R&D team in China is already very international. So I think um, um, we don't feel this is a, a, a disadvantage. Mm. Uh, you know, we've been talking about, of course, these U.S.-China trade negotiations. I guess there is still a risk out there that the U.S. potentially could clamp down on Chinese companies who work with advanced U.S. technology. I know Intel is, is a big backer of yours. Is, is there a concern here? I, I mean, what's a potential backup plan for you if we see tensions escalate again? Frankly, um, last year uh, we are... We were a little bit concerned about the uh, China-U.S. Uh, dispute, um, but as the time uh, go in and uh, we are getting back to be uh, slightly more optimistic, uh, uh, frankly speaking, and um, as you can see, the China is changing and uh, the policy is uh, very adaptive, and currently China market is more opening to uh, global investors, even if you look at the uh, automotive uh, market in China, uh, there is no other any single market like China. You know, we have uh, like a 70 to uh, around 70 uh, different uh, car brands. Uh, it's very uh, diverse, very uh, international. So this is the uh, playground for all the best companies to play uh, in China. So uh, and uh, sure. uh, even uh, recently, we changed the policy that's to encourage global uh, companies uh, to have a JV with uh, uh, larger than 50 percent share. Just, just very quickly, Yukai, are you going to be IPOing this year, listing this year? No, no, I don't think too so. early. Um, it's still too early. I think uh, I uh, still enjoy the current, okay. uh, you know, the, the private uh, status, and that allows us uh, to be to make a very bold, uh, you know, plan 